Hello, folks, and welcome back to The Shack. This is Joe N2DI coming to you today with a two-part series on the Kenwood THD75. In this first installment, I'm going to focus on the GPS functions of this awesome HT. That should set you up well for the second installment, where I'll cover APRS. Here's a quick list of some of the GPS functions this radio provides. You can display your GPS position, including latitude, longitude, and altitude, as well as your current direction and speed. You can use the radio to mark a specific location as a waypoint. The radio will provide a distance and heading display to guide you back to that point. The display can also be configured in a heads-up mode where your compass will point in the direction of travel. The THD75 can record your GPS movements, creating a log of your travel. And then this data can be exported to a PC and converted into formats like KML, reused with mapping software like Google Earth. The GPS receiver can also automatically set the radio's internal clock, ensuring accurate time and date. It can also be used to find the nearest D-Star repeater from a preloaded list, making it easy to access local repeaters without manual entry. This HT also has a GPS receiver mode that turns off the transceiver functions while keeping the GPS active for logging purposes, which helps in extending the battery life. GPS data can also be output from this radio to a PC or other devices via USB or Bluetooth, which is useful for applications that require a GPS feed. Now we're not going to cover all of that in today's episode because we don't have enough time, but I'll be covering a good chunk of that. So if you're ready to dive into the GPS functions of the Kenwood THD75, then let's get started. Okay, now first let's set up the display a little bit here. You don't need to do this to use the GPS, but setting the display like I'm going to show you will help with the second part of our series when I cover APRS. So to switch from dual receive to single, press the F or function key here, and then the AB key. That will switch you between single and dual. Now you'll probably have the date and time set on the lower portion of the screen here. I'm going to set that to display some GPS information, which is menu 904. Now to get there, you could just press the menu button and dial in 904. Now here we're going to want to set this to GPS altitude. So use the arrow buttons to move up to GPS altitude, select it and press OK. Now when you hit the menu button to back out, you'll see the GPS information down at the bottom. Now it's currently blank because the GPS is off and we don't have a lock. So next we'll go through the GPS menu settings. Okay, so now I'm going to walk you through the GPS menu. That's menu 400. Here you're going to want to go to basic settings. Now the first thing you're going to want to do, obviously, is to turn your GPS from off to on. The next option is My Position, and it's currently set to GPS, which means it'll use your GPS to get your current position. Now you can also set that position to a fixed position. You actually have five memory slots to do that. Now why would you want to do that? Well, if your position isn't changing like you're at your QTH and you want to use something like APRS or DPRS, which relies on your position, then you could save your position to one of these memory slots and reference that to save battery by turning the GPS off. You can also do that if you're in a location where you can't get a good GPS lock. Next is position ambiguity, where you can make the GPS less accurate if you want to. Operation mode is normal. Now here you could set it between normal and GPS receiver. I'll demo that in a bit. But when you set it to GPS receiver, it's going to reboot the radio, and the only thing that will be available is the GPS functions. Next is battery saver, which is normally set to auto, but I turned it off for this demo. PC output here you could switch on if you want to send the GPS data out to USB cable to a PC. And the last option is sentence. That configures the format of the data that the GPS will output to your computer. I'm going to skip over that now because we're not going to touch that. Now the tracking log menu in 410 allows you to save and log your GPS information to the SD card that can later be downloaded onto your computer. And then you could load that into software like Google Earth to plot your log positions on a map. Now this is where you would switch it on and off. And the other important bits here are the record method. So this means you could either record your position at a fixed time interval, 
like every 10 seconds or one minute, or you could switch it to log when there's a change in distance, like a hundredth of a mile or something like that. Now, I'm not going to demo that today because I'll just be recording from the shack. Okay, now the first thing I want to show you is how to save your position to the My Position memory slots. Now, you're going to do this to reference it later for things like APRS and DPRS so you can turn off your GPS. Now, it's important to know that this is not to save a position to navigate back to, like where you parked your car, okay? There's a different method for saving a position to navigate to, and I'll show you how to do that later. This is only to save a reference position that you can refer to if you can't get a GPS signal, or like I said, if you want to save battery by turning your GPS off. Okay, now to save the position, press the function key and the zero key. Now press the mode button to copy the position and use the up or down arrows to select the memory slot where you want to save it. So here I'm going to save it to my position one and then press OK. OK, so now that's saved in position slot one. Now to use that saved position instead of your GPS as your position, go to menu 401. And here, you're going to switch it from GPS to that save position that we have. Here you'll select Use. Now it's using that save position instead of your GPS. Now to switch it back, just use the arrow keys to scroll back to the GPS and select Use, and it'll switch back to using the GPS. Now let's take a closer look at the position information. To display your current position, Press the F key and then the zero key, which is position. On the first screen, you'll see latitude and longitude coordinates. You'll see your grid square information, your current altitude, date and time, your speed, and a compass that shows you your heading with north up. Now, if you press the function key, that F key, it will toggle from north up to heads up, which means the direction you will be facing is up. And here you could see the little HU in the lower right to show that you're in heads up mode. You could toggle between the two just by pressing that function key. We'll leave it in heads up mode. That'll come in handy in a minute when we're navigating to a safe position. Here you can also press the left and right arrow keys to switch through the pages of the position information. On the second page, you'll see information about your target location. But since we don't have one, the screen's blank. It'll show you the target point name if you gave it one, the direction to the target point, and the distance to the target point. On the third page, you'll see your GPS constellation information with all the GPS satellites overhead and their signal strength. Okay, now say you're going hiking and you want to save your current position so you can navigate back to it, like where you parked your car or the trailhead or something like that. If your GPS is on and it has a lock, and you can tell if it's on and it has a lock by that little satellite icon on the upper left there, if it's filled in, then you have a lock. To save your position, you have to press and hold the mark key, which is zero. Okay, and it's going to bring up this menu. This is actually your position memory store. It's just a list of memory slots where you can save positions. And you can see I have some junk in here. And it's lots two, three, four, and five. So it's a little weird how you have to save it because you can't really edit it at first. So you pick the slot where you want to save it. Let's say we're going to save it in zero, and you press enter. Now you're going to see the time pop up in the uh, right column there. That means it saved the position, but you can't really edit it here. I don't know why or if this is a bug in the firmware, but what you have to do here is to get out, to back out, and then go back into that list, and then select the memory slot where you just saved it, and hit the menu key. And now you can edit it for some reason. So here we can give it a name. Let's give it car. And press enter. The position we're not going to touch. The icon you can change. Let's say uh, I'm driving a Jeep, so I'll use a Jeep icon. Select that.
and then we can back out. Okay, and there's our car position saved. Now let's say you have that saved position and you've hiked out and now you want to come back to your car. So now how do we select that to navigate back to it? Okay, so if you're starting from this screen, you can press the mark button to bring up that list and then select the item in the list that you want to navigate to. In this case, it's going to be the car. And then you're going to press the AB button here, which is the TP function. That's target point. As soon as you do that, you'll see all the way to the right, a little flag will come up. You can toggle that flag on or off. When a flag is toggled on, then you've selected it as your target point. That's what TP stands for. Now you could back out and look at your position by pressing the function and then the mark button, which is zero. And now that we've selected a target point on the second screen, you'll see the target point selected. It's the car. You can see the icon, and you can see the distance and the direction that we have to travel in. Now, fortunately, I saved the same exact position that I'm in now, so there's no distance. But if I pick something else from that list, you'll see. Now here you'll see this test object that I created has a distance of 0.61 miles. Now here, because we're in heads-up display, you can see that the arrow on the compass is pointing in the direction that we have to travel. You can toggle that where north is up by pressing the function key. And then instead it shows you the heading in degrees. Now when you hit the F key and you put it in heads-up mode, it'll point that arrow to your target the entire time you're walking towards it. And again on the third page, you're still going to see your GPS satellite constellation. So that's how you navigate back to a saved position. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is uh, the DPRS function, which is how you transmit your position through the DSTAR network when you key the PTT button. And that'll happen if you enable DPRS. Now to enable it, you have to go into menu 630. Okay, here you're going to want to switch this on. This is GPS info in frame. Okay, now the next thing you want to do is go down to 631, which is that sentence option right there. Now select that and scroll all the way down to the bottom of this list. Whoops, I skipped it. Okay, all the way down at the bottom, you're going to see APRS sentence. You're going to want to select that. Okay, now once that's selected, you hit OK to get out. And you can get out of the menu here. Now when you're using DSTAR and your key to PTT to talk, your position information will automatically be sent. I released a video on DSTAR a few videos back. If you want more information on that, you can check that video out. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is uh, GPS receiver mode. Earlier I mentioned that you can switch the HT into a GPS receiver mode and that disables the HT's transmit and receive functions and just leaves the GPS functions available. Okay, to enter that mode you have to go into menu 403. Okay, there you're going to select GPS receiver and hit OK. Now once you hit OK at this screen it's going to restart the HT and come up in GPS receiver mode. Okay, in a minute or two, we should get um, a GPS lock here. Okay, there we go. I should have said a couple of seconds, actually. It's pretty quick. Anyway, so the uh, all the GPS functions that we spoke about earlier still work. So you can still look at the position information. Um, you could select the position from your list. Here, I'll select car. Right. Back out of that. And it'll show you a distance to the car, the uh, satellite constellation, everything else works just as it did uh, when it was in normal mode. Now to switch back, same thing, you just go menu, 403, and it switch it back to normal mode. Hit OK. And then the receiver, the um, HT will reboot, and you're back into normal mode. 
Okay, folks, so that was how to use the GPS functions in the Kenwood THD75. Stay tuned for my second video, which will build upon this information and cover APRS. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer all of them. So from the Shack of Joe, November 2, Delta, India, I wish you all good health and 73. Bye-bye.